Yo, what's good YouTube? It's Boardsy and this is going to be my personal top five gaming mice in early 2024. As a reviewer, I get asked a lot like what my main mouse is, what my favorite mice are. So I just figured why not make a video going over what I truly stand by, not considering price, not considering what I recommend to the masses, just the five best mice for me with 21 by 11 hands. So we're going to go in order from most shocking to least shocking. And I would say most shocking is a new addition, the Vaxi NPO1 Wireless. And why this is shocking is because for one, this is a 71 gram mouse. And I understand some people are like freezing up hearing that. And it's the NPO1, which is a shape that I was not a real massive fan of the first time around a few years ago when I tried it but they did make some modifications and it just feels fucking perfect inside my hand it's 100% like a wider shape that fills up your hand it is also balanced well so using it on a quicker pad it does not feel like you're being held back by the weight in really any scenarios and yeah I can still move this mouse around the pad really quickly when need be playing something like Fortnite so I really I don't know I'm not deterred by the weight Vaxi's build quality is really second to none similar to Endgame Gear who I'm gonna get to like this mouse just truly feels fucking solid all of the buttons feel tuned in um so yeah I, there's just very few complaints for me i guess if it was like 10 grams lighter that would be a plus but yeah i'm gonna try to think of like one thing that i would want to improve on each of these mice as well but yeah um the npo one just an incredible shape for like relaxed claw palm grip i would recommend watching my full review which i obviously have posted for each of these mice and then second most shocking the Endgame Gear OP1 8K. I mean, a wired mouse. That, it speaks for itself. And yeah, I know I said I'm not factoring in price, but the fact that you can get this mouse for $75 and it is truly the best performing mouse on the market, it's just ridiculous. It has hot swap switches, the Kill GX switches. I did put in the lighter switch pack variant, which I said I would do in my original review, so I just wanted to give a quick update on that. In my opinion, it doesn't provide like a massive difference in terms of lightness, but if you're an enthusiast, you want to mod the switches, I'd still say it's worth like $8 dollars um, because obviously switch when it comes to switches lighter is better i don't really stand by that I mean, maybe i do um but yeah i would say these kind of feel like the original gpx one clicks but just better in my opinion but yeah obviously the cable some people are going to be anti-cable and one good point that was brought up is people on like truly like super low sense like anything 80 centimeters per 360 or below i am sympathetic to that because i do play on more like a medium to high sensitivity so the cable drag really isn't much of an issue but yeah some people are going to have a nicer experience on a wireless mouse but again i don't know the op1 8k is so much better than the op1 wireless in my opinion and yeah performance wise sensor click latency there's nothing for me to complain about it just does come at the expense of having that wire um scroll wheel is fine the side buttons are a little bit like thin and small maybe if they were made like five percent bigger that would be pretty nice but yeah my only gripe with this is for claw grip i do feel the shape is just a little bit narrow if it could be a little bit bulkier then it would be a perfect mouse for me um, but currently it feels very good for both fingertip and claw but like i said it just is on the thinner side if you do have wide hands and don't want a thin mouse i mean i can just show you like the base compared to a gpx <laughs> okay here we are just had to use two hands but you can see this does really get thin at the grip width which is definitely going to be a good thing if you do like thinner mice so yeah op 18 k incredible performance incredible price it's something that i, tr I just keep on my desk because it's so good um and now third i would say actually no this is probably the least shocking but whatever we've lost that we've lost that trend the gpx2 i i don't really want to talk about it it's a fucking gpx and yeah maybe if you have like truly tiny hands but like i said for my hand size just given how much time i've put on the gpx it's just a staple the performance is incredible i really in retrospect like the optical switches are a little bit too heavy and yeah they do have a quick rebound they're easily spammable but still i think if they were a hair lighter that could have been pretty solid given that there are now optical implementations on like the sprime pm1 ninjutsu sora v2 which i've still yet to try um that are supposedly much lighter but just like similar quality wise so yeah really um i'm not gonna hate on a gpx to be different it's still like one of the most incredible most widely used mice like you think you're better than simple you think you're better than donk like that's the thing about the gpx you can grip it like a fucking in mongoloid and you're good like it's just a canvas you can't really say that about every mouse on this list so yeah gpx always stays in the rotation and then the final two mice i considered like morphing into one mouse but i was like i'm finally going to do one top five list where i only have five mice the ulx and the wl mouse beast x medium i have tried the mini and i really just don't like the shape it's just truly too small for me i tried to try to push my limits but i couldn't um the final mouse other sizes 
we're apparently delayed again until like early March, but they should be coming in a few weeks time. But I've still been really happy with my medium. This is a batch two unit. You can tell by the foam on the battery instead of like the nasty adhesive. And these are obsidian skates, I believe. And yeah, I, I just really can't complain about the ULX. This quality is solid at the sidewalls performance wise the only gripe i have in terms of quality is just like side wobble on the main clicks and it's not like and yeah this is not something that is game breaking in actual use um but i did have my original copy get some like post travel grinding on the clicks so i just i the clicks i feel like are the real weak point on the ulx at this point um, but yeah, the lightness of them is really good. They are special Omron 20M switches and just the weight of this at 38 grams is still the most impressive full-size mouse I've felt in terms of weight. I would put the WM mouse medium at a close second. The balancing is definitely not like 100% as dialed in as it is on the ULX, but it's really splitting hairs. Um, but yeah, the Ninjutsu Sora, once again, I've still yet to try that. I've heard people say that is pretty much on the same level, but I don't know. I just can't judge mice that I have not put my hands on that USPS refuses to deliver to me. Um, but yeah, WL Mouse, this is the updated copy with the um, skin coating and they did address the side button issues. They made the clicks a little bit lighter. And yeah, they slightly tuned in the Omron optical switches to have a quicker rebound and just lighter actuation in general. So yeah, I'm honestly a fan of it. This was the um, Board Z edition, which I believe is um, sold out or something. I don't know. WMS really did not keep me keep me in the loop there. But, um, but yeah, they did make a limited edition to uh, 333 units. Zebra colorway with me if you want to think I'm biased and just not take my word for anything. Even though in my opinion, it's just more plausible that that I like the mouse because it's pretty much a fucking ULX clone and I have liked the final mouse shape since 2019. So, but yeah, my critique for um, WO mouse would definitely be to just fill in the sides. A solid side variant would go extremely hard in my opinion. Like you can keep the holes on the palm and on the clicks, but just the sides, God, get rid of those. You can put grip tape, but still it's like then the mouse is wider. I don't want grip tape. Um, but yeah, also the battery life is pretty subpar. There are like rumors of firmwares that exist that improve on it, but like nobody has access to them. So it's fucking vaporware in my opinion. So improve the battery life, put solid sides, and then it's just incredible. Man, should get the weight down even more. I believe in you, China. Um, yeah, that's really that. I don't know what else there is to say about these. I've covered pretty much all of these mice in a lot of detail if you want to go to my full reviews to see more. But um, yeah, this is what I prefer primarily in aim trainers like fingertip grip in Fortnite, like some type of claw hybrid generally. Um, yeah, this is just my mouse taste currently. There are obviously so many good mice, plenty that even have the seal of approval that didn't make the cut, but I'm just thinking like what are genuinely my five favorite go-to mice on the market right now, and they are these five. And yeah, I really chose not to include any honorable mentions just because I wanted to keep this as like short and brief as I could, just showing what I think early 2024 is the creme de la creme, the top of the mouse market. If you are like me and you're like a kind of degenerate mouse user collector, let me know your top five in the comments below but yeah that's going to be all for this video definitely was a fun one to make um peace out like and subscribe